Hey, everyone. Welcome to Blended Conversations 2022 season. We are back with the incomparable Sun Lu out of Los Angeles, California. He is joining us today. We're going to talk about his traditions and his life and his art, and we hope you enjoy it and you'll get to check out some poems. With that being said, help us welcome Sun Lu. How are you? What's up, everybody? I am doing so good. I'm so happy to be here. I appreciate you, Eccentric. Oh, thank you for coming and appeasing me. Um, and we'll get right into it. Why don't you introduce yourself to the people? Uh, what's up, everybody? My name is uh, Sun Lu. I'm a spoken word poet, performer, and filmmaker um, based out here in Los Angeles, California. Um, I've been doing the craft for the last seven years, um, and I went to school school at USC for uh, animation and film. Um, so a big part of uh, uh, my uh, artistry is to combine those mediums and to tell stories about my family, about my culture, um, and just be what I like to say a historian for my family's experiences. That's so interesting. I didn't know you went to school for animation and filmmaking. How awesome. <laughs> Dope. So let's get right into it. You spoke about telling your family story. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background, your culture, where your family is from, and how you ended up in LA. Um, yeah, so uh, my parents are both from Vietnam, and they had immigrated to the States in the 70s. Um, and uh, then, you know, um, literally, a year after, um, uh, uh, a year after my dad's twenty fourth birthday, um, my grandpa had passed, and uh, a year after that, that was when I was born. Um, and so, with that lineage, carries a lot of uh, a lot of trauma, a lot of um, a, a lot of grief, a lot of things that I've had to process through the years through. Uh, therapy and through um, just conversations with the family as I was raised into like a sort of like tumultuous time in both my parents life and you know their uh, mid to late 20s to early 30s um, I was you know uh, just kicking it in the back of a textile factory that they were both running um, and so uh, a lot of my poetry and a lot of my perspectives um, come from that time when I was really getting to know them from uh, uh, that really intimate, vulnerable part of their lives um, and growing into the man that I am today because of them and reflecting on uh, not just the pain, but the joy, the resilience that they've, uh, uh, that they've um, put within themselves to get through what they have. Um, and so my work and what I strive to do with my art is to honor them in that way. Nice. Um, sorry about your losses. Uh, you know, time, you know, makes things easier, but it's still something we deal with. Like you said, grief is very complex, right? And then right. you create these poems and these stories out of this place that we're in and share them with the world and then so many people take what they want from those right take what applies to them and leaves what doesn't and I think that's what makes art uh, poetry filmmaking so great because once you share it, it it kind of no longer is yours right it becomes everybody's to digest it as they may so um yeah so I know a lot of work went into the <laughs> went into the work and into your work, knowing you've seen you perform. You can definitely see that your culture and your heritage is such a big part of who you are on and off the stage. So I think um, with that, I think this is a perfect time to go ahead and introduce your first poem. You guys out there, get ready, get set, get go. Check out this poem by Sun Lu. And we are back. Hope you enjoyed it. So tell me, let's talk about your favorite family tradition. Oh, favorite family <laughs> tradition. Um, uh, <laughs> this might be, uh, I don't know, I guess cliche or maybe 
you could see from a mile away, but my favorite family tradition would have to be uh, the Lunar New Year celebration, um, where all the um, elders are passing out red envelopes um, uh, to the younger generation. Um, uh, and for those who aren't aware, um, every year uh, around the springtime is around the time of the Lunar New Year, usually it's within February. Everyone else is like, okay, January is the start of the new year. Um, uh, in Chinese calendars, it's, it's actually in February. Um, and uh, Chinese New Year celebrations, which is you know how most people know it, but to speak in a broader term, it's Lunar New Year. Um, uh, uh, it's actually a celebration that takes up the whole month. It's not just a day or a weekend. Um, and so that's filled with parades, um, uh, firecrackers, lion dances. Um, it's just an amazing celebratory time. And I'm grateful that I live in an area where um, they actually have like uh, Lunar New Year uh, parades and floats and everything. Um, uh, and I get to be uh, amongst uh, the culture, the community, and I get to, you know, see more people uh, dressed up in their traditional outfits. So I'm not the only one out here. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, I'm super excited. Everyone's dressed beautifully to the nines. Um, uh, uh, I get to see family I haven't seen in a while. Um, and overall, it's just a, a wholesome celebratory time. And I, I always look forward to that every year. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, in less formal terms, that sounds like our cookouts, right? African-American yeah, cookouts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like African American cookouts, you know, that's our thing. We have our slides and our customary gear. Some people come really dressed up, some people are laid back. But one thing you know, when you get there, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be celebration. It's going to be culture just everywhere. So that's what that sounded like to me. And it's something that I think I would love to be in the middle of. <laughs> I, always, I always tell people how I thought of it is like, our potluck is akin to y'all's cookout. So yes. we in there, we in there, babe. <laughs> With that being said, let's talk about um, how you began writing. Do you remember the first time you wrote something? Do you remember the first time you felt the inkling to write something? Tell me about how you got into poetry. Oh, um, yes, I do remember. Uh, I believe I was in sixth grade yeah I was in sixth grade at a um uh, at a Christian school and like all like a lot of like English classes you know they'll get you into like writing poetry is like oh you know like uh you know here's some Shakespeare you know here go <laughs> ahead and write yourself some couplets you know um so uh you know I did that along with um, my other students but there was also like a little like poetry competition where, uh, you know, whoever had, you know, where we basically had to write tributes to um, uh, leaders within our communities, right? So, you know, uh, people, you know, the, there are topics of like firefighters, um, uh, right, of like local politicians. Um, and so, you know, I wrote one about um, uh, uh, the firefighters and I had uh, I had made a metaphor of them being akin to wolves right you know like not having to be a lone wolf but once you're in a pack once you're working together you can you know uh, uh, overcome a fire um, and uh, that was that was uh, uh, that was selected to be um, uh, like one uh, I was selected amongst like other people so it was like a sixth grader and an eighth grader you know two were picked for each category and were uh, uh, selected to speak and perform our poem in front of the whole auditorium. So what? that was like my, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was like my first like dip both into like being creative and writing poetry. And then in a way, like stepping into spoken word. And I didn't even know it was spoken word until, you know, years later when I actually dabbled into the art form. That's so. wild. So you write metaphors about firefighters being in a wolf pack and overcoming fires in a sixth grade, dude. Yeah. Oh, and let me tell you, my mom was helping me too. Like, like this wasn't just printed on white paper. My mom helped me on like Microsoft Word, like, you know, putting in a picture of a wolf and like, you know, uh, the firefighter with the fires blazing in the background. Like, like I went all out, you know, because I'm also like visual arts. Like I, I said, you know, I'm going to school. So we, you know, me and my mom, I love her so much. Like she, she helps amplify, you know, my creative side, which I'm super grateful for. Um, so yeah, that was a that was a fun experience. 
Awesome. I think that's a perfect lead into your next poem. Since we're talking about how you got into poetry, check out another poem by Sun Lu. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. And we're going to keep this conversation going. I think I want to ask you, if you're watching, uh, just know that these questions are random. I try to keep it as organic as possible. So I don't really know what I'm going to ask just because I think you get more out of a conversation by just talking and, and listening and being candid with each other. So with that being said, we're going to go to food. Um, I find food very interesting because it's one of those things that brings people together, right? It pushes your boundaries. Um, if you're in a different place, it really, uh, for me personally, I love to eat. I'm a foodie. So it really helps me kind of center myself, get outside of myself and push my boundaries, especially when I'm in a new place. So tell me your favorite food. Oh, okay. Favorite food. I'd have to say, so, um, uh, uh, just to preface, um, my ethnicity is Chinese Vietnamese, as in my family are ethnically blood Chinese, but we were born, uh, my family uh, uh, were born and raised in Vietnam before okay. immigrating to the States. So my experiences have been, you know, both Chinese food and Vietnamese food. And I'd say my favorite of the two would have to be um, a dish called bong riu. Um, and bong riu is a... Um, uh, vermicelli uh, tomato soup um, with uh, you know uh, pork and like uh, um, like bro not Brussels sprouts um, uh, you know basil's on top of it it's it's a it's a lot of mix you know the stuff that you'd usually put in pho which people are familiar okay. with bone reel is like um, like I I would consider it like the edgier older cousin um, <laughs> it's it's got more of a kick to it um, it, the soup is a is a bright um, uh, orange red, and you can definitely stain your shirt with it. But it's it's a it's a very savory, um, uh, a salty kick, um, and uh, that's my favorite to uh, eat whenever my mom and whenever I get a chance to be at home with my mom, and she's like, "What you want?" I'm like, "You know, you got time to make that bone real long? You know, you know that thing I like. You know, it's like, all right, fine, I'll." give up half my day, I guess. I was going to um, say, it probably takes like <laughs> hours and hours to make. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, oh, yeah, it does. It does. You know, but, you know, my mom's super enthusiastic. Like, she finds a lot of purpose, um, you know, from like making me and my brothers happy. So I'm so grateful to have her as a mother. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. There's nothing like a good soup. Um, at the end of the day, that's cool. I think I, you know, I... My dad is Haitian and my mom is American, so I get a lot of good food. I'm going to have to say that Haitian food is probably my favorite thing ever. <laughs> it is so good. Uh, so I definitely understand that my dad can't cook. So I either have to order out some food or just pray that my aunts are cooking and bring over some food. Now, when it's done correctly, Haitian spaghetti is just Haitian spaghetti Haitian what? spaghetti and it's just like you know peppers and onions there's hot dogs in it and it's just the most delicious thing and then they also have something um that I really like which is lambi which is a stew conch and like this red sauce and it's served with rice and plantain and it's just incredible so Haitian food is a vibe. I'm hoping to have it more represented this year at the festival because they have so much great food and we have so much great food in this melting pot that is South Florida. You know what I mean? Um, Why so, didn't you tell me about those joints when I was out there? I'm go, I'm, I, I, <laughs> next time. Next time. I'll be there next wait, time. Didn't you uh, go to Unique Park? Didn't you try some? I was there. Time? I was there. Okay, but you I didn't hear the nothing about right? no spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they serve the spaghetti at the uh, restaurant, but they do serve the lambi, which is the conch. Uh, and conch is, you know what conch is? I don't know. I had the oxtail with, okay. with some of their sauce, which you were like, <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it's kind of, but nah, you know. <laughs> you know it's, uh, so oxtail, uh, not oxtail, conch is in the ocean and it's basically in the snail family. Mm hmm. So it's very good. Um, anywho, <laughs> I could talk about food all day, but we're going to move on. Tell me your biggest accomplishment as an artist. 
as a poet or a filmmaker or whatever you consider your biggest accomplishment as an artist? Oh man. Uh, you know, I, I'm blessed to have had opportunities to, you know, uh, make some headways in the slam world, you know, um, especially performing in your stage and hitting finals um, and, and touching stages at, you know, nationals and, and, and whatnot. But I'd say the biggest accomplishment for me actually happened um, this past November for my debut spoken word album release show. Um, my debut album uh, title is uh, Heirloom, for those who are curious, and you can check out all my poems with produced uh, music and instrumentation on Spotify. Um, but for that show, it was a it was the first show that I had like organized and ran and like had a team of volunteers set up and everything. Um, and I had a whole like, uh, you know, kind of uh, theatrical um, visual production with lighting um, that would complement my performance as the music's playing. Um, and uh, I invited my parents to come see. And usually I don't bring them out much or when they do, you know, I had have had experiences where you know maybe the audience would give me a standing ovation but my dad would be there with his arms crossed you know um and uh uh you know um and it's it's difficult as an asian person to you know live up to the expectations of our parents mm -hmm. um uh, uh because they perceive art as something to be you know uh, as just a hobby and not something to be seriously yes. considered but for you know uh for not only my parents to be there, but for them to invite my cousins, to invite my aunts and uncles to be there, where I had a good amount of family from both sides who were occupying half the seats. I was, you know, just completely floored um, and emotional by the end of it. And by the end of, you know, that performance, and I gave it my all, um, I finally got the standing ovation from both my mom and dad that <laughs> I didn't have all those years before. And that, that, that was such a full circle, you know, moment um, of, of just gratitude and, and uh, sort of my dad saying, I see you now. I, mm. I understand you now. Isn't it um, nice to be seen? <laughs> it's incredible to be seen. And I wish that upon each and every person that they find that moment in their life where they can be seen, where they know they are seen. And that was that moment for me. Um, and uh, yeah, it just reinvigorated my purpose with this art. And um, it was just one of those fires to keep on going, especially through the mess of this pandemic, yes. world, right? So yes. that Absolutely. was a big one for me. Nice. I think I can relate to that. And um, like I said, my dad is Haitian. He's a Catholic race Haitian. So he ruled with an iron fist. Um, you know, <laughs> he came here when, you know, from Haiti to the States about 18, 19 years old, really young, Catholic race. He met my mom. Uh, they've been married. I'm 36. They've been married 35 years now. But he ruled with an iron fist, man. And when, you know, with Haitian people, education is huge. I mean, it is the thing. And you are going to go to school to do something that makes money and makes you a good living. So I was in pharmacy, you know, when life happened to me and I decided to pursue the arts full time and my dad was just not happy. I had two kids at the time. I was a single mama. I was a young widow. Um, and he was just like, who's going to take care of you? How are you going to take care of your kids? What are you doing? You went to school. You didn't go. Da, 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 da. And I remember the moment that it came full circle. It, for me, it was my first play. Um, mm -hmm. and my dad doesn't really like to come to shows because some of the content is not really his thing. You know, he doesn't, the openness on stage is sometimes a lot for him to digest what people are saying. So he doesn't really come to shows, um, but he came to my play. And when my dad told me he was proud of me, I was just like, okay, I have arrived. This yep. is what I'm supposed to be doing for this guy to say that to me about something that I know is so outside of what he's, you know, accustomed with. So mm -hmm. I could definitely relate to your story. I definitely know that feeling. And it's, I don't, I'm not even sure if I've had another moment. I've had a lot of great moments, like you said, but I'm not sure if 
my dad saying that about the arts and as it relates to me and who I am. I don't know if anything has stopped that yet. So kudos. And kudos I'm so happy. You. <laughs> and we are going to, before we wrap it up, we're going to check out another poem from Sun Lu. When we come back, he'll tell you his upcoming projects. He'll tell you where to find him on social media. And you guys make sure you lock him in. So check out the poem from Sun Lu. Well, I hope you enjoyed that poem. Before we wrap it up, uh, let's talk about your upcoming projects and tell the people how they can find you. Yes, yeah, so uh, I have um, some uh, spoken word animated short films that I've produced in the past couple of years that are currently um, in the film festival uh, market right now. So if you want to support, please just go ahead and check them out for free on YouTube. Um, and uh, uh, and if you uh, can absolutely take it another step, uh, follow me on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok at Sun Lu Official, S-U-N-L-U-U Official on all social media. So I can give you an update for, you know, if a film makes it this film festival and needs a couple votes, I'll shoot that out and you can show me that love. Or if you just want to uh, give feedback and let me know what you think. I'm also producing... Um, uh, I'm trying out a new medium of creating a uh, short film, short spoken word film TikToks as well. So I already have a good couple of them uh, on there right now, if you'd like to check that out. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just creating more stories, I'm delving more into my mental health and personal life. Um, uh, uh, I've kind of uh, uh, spoken a lot about family, but I am now in a place where I'm creating space for where I exist just solely as myself and mm. um, it's going to be yeah it's it's a new journey that i'd like to take you all on if you are willing and open um if you'd like to get to know more about me in that regard um but yeah i'm just growing in the craft um moving along that and so um yeah please please uh, go check me out that oh and please stream uh heirloom on spotify i promise you you will not um forget this experience. Uh, I worked so hard with a producer, fictitious professor to really craft a emotional arc of my family in eight poems. Um, and we just bring you into multiple slices of my and my family's life. Um, and it's, it's, it's meant to be sort of like an um, auditory short film in a streaming service. So nice. I'm super hyped about it. I love it. I hope you all do too. Awesome. I, I know I said that was it, but um. I'm going to edit something. I want you to talk just a, just a couple minutes about your journey to uh, your mental health, using the arts to assist, uh, using therapy to assist in that, and what you learned about yourself from that journey so far. So my relationship with art has been quite interesting. Um, uh, the irony of art was that I had used it as a way to gain attraction and gain um, approval from people. And that's actually what made me uh, a good, like experienced artist was like, oh, if I draw this or paint this nice for somebody, if I perform this perfectly, I'll get this, you know, uh, feedback from somebody. And I actually had an unhealthy relationship with my mm. art, um, you know, uh, uh, to the point of, you know, when the pandemic had shut everything down, when the shows weren't coming in, when I wasn't getting any gigs for like any of my, um, uh, you know, video production or, or, you know, visual arts production things, I had to rediscover why am I doing art? What's the purpose of this? You know, you know, why do I do this? I don't feel good or at least I just get a hit of adrenaline anytime someone, you know, likes it or appreciates it, or, you know, you know, gives me a penny on the dollar for, you know, the, the work that I do, you know, what, what's, the, what, what do I need more from this? Right. Um, and so going through therapy and uh, uh, using, um, using therapy as a resource to work through my depression, my anxiety surrounding art um reframing my understanding of art um and why i do it um has been so important to me uh and essential for me to even be an artist and exist you know why 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 even do art if it actually drains your soul how counterintuitive mm -hmm. um 
And so, you know, um, I came into the conclusion that my purpose with my art forms and, you know, the ones that I um, have grown a sort of um, intermediary mastery of at this point in my life, I'll always be growing. Um, but my purpose of them um, is to become a historian, mm. um, to use art to express this moment in time in which I was human and say I was here, to say that my family around me were here, that they existed, um, to capture this moment before it leaves um, and is forgotten. And so reframing and understanding my art is to remember who we are. Um, and uh, uh, that has given me so much um, spirit and soul within how I see and create art now um, and uh, has definitely helped my relationship with it. Uh, and yeah, it's something that I hope to share and inspire other folks to do as well, to you know, um, be present, to find significance in your life as it is right now, however good or bad. Um, you are existing through a human experience that deserves to be recorded and put down. Yeah. You have the power to express that. Wow, that is very interesting. When you said historian, I was like, yes, come through storytelling and keeping all this stuff uh, on the books. I think um, it's very important to have these conversations, especially with artists. A lot of times people see poets and, you know, we're supposed to be these happy people, these intelligent people, these bright and colorful people. And then you get to a poetry slam and you hear all this sad stuff or you hear all these trials and people are introducing, you're like, yep, no just kind of a human kind of working it out and I know how to put it in words. Um, if you are out there and you are struggling with mental health issues, uh, I am not a therapist, but PSA, go do what you love, seek help, get therapy, work through your issues. You can only change what you confront. Uh, discomfort uh, leads to growth, growth leads to changes and changes leads to the life you want. So uh, artists, Poetry is not therapy. Therapy is therapy. Therapy is therapy. Oh my God. <laughs> therapy is therapy. So as you are using your arts to soothe, to calm for its therapeutic values, remember it is not therapy. Therapy is therapy. And um, there is nothing wrong with getting help. So uh, with that being said, thank you for joining us on Blended Conversations with some loose so so good to see you so good to talk to you uh you guys tune in for the next blended conversations we run from june to september all online all free for you to consume thank you so much for joining us peace thank you for having me eccentric thank you thank you